Hey guys, Kyle Thompson here with the Human Performance and Health Research Lab at the University of Guelph. Today we're going to give you a little bit of a sneak preview into something we've been working on. So in the past, I've done my research with the sprint team looking at whether or not resisted sprinting or ischemic preconditioning, which is kind of like the manipulation of blood flow before exercise, can influence subsequent sprint performance. Obviously, what we're hoping to find is ways of improving sprint performance so that we can use these methods on game day, uh, you know, to help us run a bit faster. One question that I've recently been asking myself is how can we delay that burning sensation that we get when we're doing intense exercise? So think of the 300, 400, 600, and 800 meter races. Towards the end of those races, everyone who's run them is familiar with that extreme burning sensation in your legs. And essentially what this is from is something called exercise-induced metabolic acidosis. So this is actually kind of like the acidification or essentially your, your blood and your muscles turning to battery acid, okay? So as the pH drops, which you can see on the right, as the pH drops, uh, as exercise intensity increases, this is an indicator that you would be burning more and more, okay? And the reason this is happening is because when you're performing intense exercise, your requirement for energy increases and the production of that energy has byproducts which cause that burning sensation. So our body has one strategy of dealing with this and that's through ventilation. So think of uh, your ventilation or your breathing as a way that you can regulate this acidification that, experience, that you experience during uh, intense exercise. Okay, so remember when I said that uh, the need for energy and the production of energy leads to an accumulation of byproducts. Well, those byproducts actually tell your brain to increase the respiratory rate and the respiratory volume. So what we're looking at is whether or not we can just increase breathing rates prior to exercise voluntarily without that um, that drive from those byproducts telling the brain to increase. And we're trying to see if that will produce an alkalizing effect or meaning an increase in pH rather than a decrease in pH so that when you perform the intense exercise, your, your muscles and your, your blood doesn't really acidify or burn as quickly. So what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the lab and I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, a demonstration uh, on how we would perform that breathing technique. Today, I've got Atlanta Lincoln here helping me demonstrate one of the uh, protocols we've been working on with some of the athletes here at the University of Guelph. So, as I've previously explained, what we're working on is kind of like a ventilation way of inducing a performance benefit, okay? So we're going to demonstrate today what we would be doing and how we've been doing some of the research to see if maybe playing around with the breathing rates before exercise can influence how easy the exercise actually feels. So what I'm going to get is Alana to land her back. She's ready to go with her knees bent. And I'm going to make sure you're nice and relaxed. Perfect. She's doing excellent. Um, what I'm going to get her to do is just kind of do a, a brief demonstration of what we've been doing. So typically what we've been doing is we do 30 of these maximal breaths, uh, followed by a breath retention for about a minute. And we do that for a 10 minute period, followed by an exercise test. What we're going to have Elena do today is just 15 of these breaths to demonstrate exactly how we're doing it, followed by a breath retention. Okay? So what I'm going to get Elena to do is take a big breath in as much as possible, and then try and expel all that air. So you're looking for volume of breath. Okay? So she's going to do 15 of these breaths, and then she's going to exhale fully and hold her breath. Ready to go? Perfect. So we're going to start in three, two. One, and go. Great. And what you want to do is you want to encourage them to continue to get maximal uh, volume in and out rather than speeding up the rate at which they're doing the breath. Okay? 
Good, we're gonna get a line of you three more breaths and then expel out all our air before holding your breath. So three, two, and last one. And hold. Excellent work. And that's what we've been working on. Thanks, Alana. Hey guys, welcome back. So essentially what we did is we took 13 athletes off the team and we had them come in on a couple of different occasions and perform either the breathing that Alana just demonstrated to you, or we had them just breathe normally for 10, 10 minutes prior to doing an exercise test. The exercise test we use is called a 30 second wing gait test. And the reason we use this is because it almost gets into that, that energy system or that time period that we think would potentially uh, showcase a difference if we're using this breathing technique. The other reason we use the test is because this is the most commonly used exercise test uh, in the research literature whenever you're trying to do a measurement of anaerobic uh, power, okay? So the way the test works is you jump on a bike with very little resistance and you begin pedaling as fast as you can. All of a sudden, when you're pedaling as fast as you possibly can, we add a load. Usually the load is a percentage of your body weight and your goal is to keep pushing for 30 seconds and keep spinning the wheels as fast as you can. To be frank, this exercise test is awful and simulates almost the pain that you would endure during a full out 300 meter race, okay? So at the end of this test, the athletes would get off and they would rate their perceived difficulty of the test using what's called a visual analog scale. You can actually see the scale that we used along the bottom. It's just a straight line that the athlete is able to click along to indicate how hard they thought the test was. Now this is where things get interesting. So what we actually saw after collecting all the data was that individuals thought the exercise test was actually easier after they'd performed that rapid pace breathing. The way I look at this is if we're performing races like the 300, 400, 600, 800, or possibly even the 1500 meter, perhaps we're able to give you a little bit of extra energy at the end of the race or make it seem like you still have more energy. So essentially the next step for the research is to take this idea and apply it directly to the track and have people do this type of breathing before they do runs to see if they can actually improve performance. Lastly, I just wanna give a quick shout out to the Burr Lab here at the University of Guelph. If you see any of these beautiful people at the track, feel free to ask them any of your wildest questions regarding physiology in relation to exercise performance. And I'm sure they'd love to help you. See you at the track.